Lesson 4.4, divide tens, hundreds, and thousands by one digit. We can divide numbers through thousands by one digit divisors. We first identify the basic fact, then use place value to divide. So I want you to remember that this is the dividend. Here it is in this form of an equation. It's how many in all. And this is the divisor. Here it is here outside. The divisor tells us how many groups we have, or it could be how many are in each group. Our answer is the quotient, and it could be how many are in each group if the divisor is the number of groups, or it could be the number of groups if the divisor is in each group. I know that can sound confusing, but these can change places depending on what they represent. In video 2.3, we learned to multiply by tens, hundreds, and thousands by counting the amount of zeros in the factors and using basic facts. So we learned that we can look at the basic fact 3 times 2, and there's a zero in the factor, so there's going to be a zero in the product. We have 3 times 2 is 6 with a zero for 60. And the same for 3 times 200. We have a basic fact of 3 times 2, which is 6. We have two zeros in the factor. We have two zeros in the product. Same thing with 3 times 2,000. Now we have three zeros, and here we have three zeros. For dividends and quotients, when the place value of the dividend is tens, then the quotient is tens. And when the dividend is hundreds, the quotient is hundreds. So look at the pattern and similarity between multiplication and division by tens, hundreds, and thousands. We have a basic fact of 2 times 4, which is 8. There's a 0 in the factor, so there's a 0 in the product. We look for the basic facts and the amount of zeros. Here we have 80 for a dividend. It's divided by 4. We see our basic fact of 8 divided by 4. There's a 0 in the dividend, so there's going to be a 0 in the quotient. That's if it's not in the divisor, and we'll talk about that in a minute. So notice that's when we're dividing by a one-digit number, like a four. Mr. Lee is filling bags of apples to sell. Each bag will have eight apples. How many bags can Mr. Lee fill if he has 160 apples? We need to divide 160 into bags of eight. 160 divided by 8. We identify the basic fact, 16 divided by 8. We use place value, 160 is equal to 16 tens, and we divide 16 tens by 8. We get 2 tens, which is 20 bags. If you're confused about turning 160 into 16 tens, there'll be a link to my video 1.5 where we learned how to rename numbers back in chapter 1. How many bags of 8 apples could Mr. Lee fill if he had 1,600 apples? We need to divide 1,600 apples into bags of 8 each. We can still see the basic fact, 16 divided by 8. We have 16 hundreds divided by 8, which is equal to 2 hundreds. That would be 200 bags. So we have a dividend of 160. It's divided by 8. We see the basic fact of 16 divided by 8. So our quotient is a 2 with a 0 like the dividend had. And if we have 1,600 divided by 8, we see the basic fact of 16 divided by 8, which is 2. We have two zeros in the dividend. There'll be two zeros in the quotient. But be careful because that works for putting zeros in the quotient when we're dividing by a one-digit number. If we have 1,600 divided by 800, now we have two zeros in the dividend and two zeros in the divisor, there won't be any zeros in the quotient. This is like 16 divided by 8 equals 2. 800 plus 800 is 1,600. See? So be careful when you're doing this, okay? Here we have 2,400 divided by 6. We think 24 hundreds divided by 6, 
24 divided by 6, that's a 4, that's 4 hundredths. We write 4 hundred. We can also look at it as the dividend has two zeros, so our quotient will have two zeros. Here we have 6,300 divided by 9. We think of 63 hundredths. 63 divided by 9 is 7, so 63 hundredths divided by 9 is equal to 700. We have two zeros in the dividend. We're dividing by one digit. We're going to have two zeros in the quotient. And we can use the pattern of zeros and our knowledge of basic facts to find an unknown number. Here we have 280 divided by n is equal to 70. So remember that n, that letter of the alphabet, is a variable. And it just takes the place of an unknown number. It would be the same as if we had 280 divided by a blank space. And we think, well, 28 divided by some number is equal to 7. Well, I know 7 times 4 is 28. That must be a 4. So n is equal to 4. Here we have n divided by 9 is equal to 30. And we think, well, 9 times 3 is 27. This has a 0 on it. So the dividend must have a zero. It must be 27 with a zero. It must be 270. Bob and Sophia baked cookies for a bake sale at their school. Bob baked 105 cookies, and Sophia baked 75 cookies. If they wrap two cookies in each bag, how many bags of cookies will they have to sell? So the first thing we need to do is find the total number of cookies they baked. Bob baked 105 and Sophia baked 75. 105 plus 75 is equal to 180 cookies in all. We need to divide 180 by 2 because they put 2 in each bag. 18 tens divided by 2, which is equal to 9 tens, which is equal to 90 bags. We can also look at it as the basic facts of 18 divided by 2 is a 9. There's a 0 in the dividend, so there's a 0 in the quotient. It costs Sarah $10 in supplies to make one bracelet. She sells six bracelets for $84. How much more is the selling price of each bracelet than the cost to make one? So first we need to find the cost of making six bracelets. They're $10 to make each one. She made six. Six times $10 is $60. Now we subtract this cost from the $84 she earned from selling them. $84 minus $60 is equal to $24. So she made $24 for selling those six bracelets. So what, how much more is the selling price for each bracelet? We divide the $24 by the six bracelets, and 24 divided by six is equal to four, so we have $4 more selling price for each. She made them for $10 each, but she sold them for $14 each, didn't she? And the difference of the selling price to the cost is called profit. So Sarah made $24 in profit, she made $4 profit for each of the six bracelets. Sanjay wants to buy a bicycle for $150. If he earns $5 every time he walks his neighbor's dog, how many times will he need to walk the dog to have enough money to buy the bicycle? So we need to find 150 divided by $5. $150 divided by $5, we see the basic fact of 15 and 5. 15 divided by 5 is 3. We have a 0 in the dividend, so we have a 0 in the quotient. That's 30 times he needs to walk the dog to have enough money to buy the bicycle. Tala saves $10 of her babysitting money each month. After one year, will she have been saved enough to get a $150 bicycle like Sanjay's? So we think $150 divided by $10 each month, we can see the basic fact of 15 divided by 1. 15 divided by 1 is equal to 15. It would take her 15 months. 
but it's asking us if after one year she'll have saved enough money. So no, there's 12 months in one year. She'll need to save for three more months to have enough money to buy the bicycle. Which of these quotients are equal to 30? So we can mark all the ones that apply. Would 1,500 divided by five be equal to 30? Well, let's look at the basic facts. We have a 15 and a five, and 15 divided by five is a three, but look, there's two zeros in the dividend. That means there'll be two zeros in the quotient. But this is only one zero for 30, so it's not this one. We have 120 divided by four. We've got the basic fact of 12 and four. 12 divided by four is a three. We see we have one zero in the dividend, so there would be one zero in the quotient. So yes, this one would work, wouldn't it? What about here? We have 60 divided by two. We can see the basic fact of six divided by two, which is three. We have one zero in the dividend, so there should be one zero in the quotient. We'd have a three and a zero. So yes, this one would work too, wouldn't it? What about this one? We have 180 divided by 60. So it's asking us how many 60s are in 180. And yes, we can see the basic fact of 18 divided by six, which would be a three, except look, we're not dividing by a one digit number. They both have a zero. How many 60s can fit into 180? If we're really confused, 60 plus 60 is 120. And if we add one more 60, that would be 180. That's three 60s. That's not 30. So we know the quotients that are equal to 30 are 100 divided by 4 and 60 divided by 2. Now we're going to be using higher order thinking skills. I see we have a table here, so let's look at that first. It says bird wing flaps in two minutes. We have the type of bird and the number of flaps. Woodpecker is 2,400, cardinal is 4,800, and a bluebird is 6,480. The question is, in one minute, how many more times can a cardinal flap its wings than a woodpecker? So do you notice something here? It says in one minute. What did the table say? So first, we notice the title of the frequency table. It says bird wing flaps in two minutes. So we need to divide by two to know their flaps in one minute. If this is the amount for two minutes, we need to cut it in half, right? We need to divide it by two to know what one minute is, and the same thing with the cardinal. So for the woodpecker, 2,400 divided by two, we see 24 divided by two, which is a 12, because two times 12 is 24. We have two zeros in the dividend, so there's two zeros in the quotient. We're dividing by one digit. And for the cardinal, we have 4,800 divided by two. We think of 48 divided by two, which is 24. We have two zeros in the dividend, so we'll have two zeros in the quotient because we're dividing by a one digit number. So now we know how many times they can flap their wings in one minute. Now it wants to know how many more times a cardinal will flap than a woodpecker. So we need to subtract to find the difference. And we do cardinal minus woodpecker. We do. 2,400 minus 1,200, and we see that the cardinal is 1,200 more times than the woodpecker for flapping its wings. So be very careful when you're working with tables or diagrams. You want to look very carefully at the information it's giving you. If we didn't see that this was two minutes, we might have thought it said one minute. So be very, very careful. So our next lesson is going to be 4.5, and we're going to estimate quotients with compatible numbers. I hope you're having a really good day. I'm really proud of you, and I'll see you next time. Bye.